Hey everybody, welcome back to Urgent Care Stories. This is episode nine. <clears throat> this is a scenario that you see pretty frequently in the ER and in the emergency department in uh, urgent care settings. Um, but I saw it like last week and I thought it was a good reminder of kind of some of the indications, how you treat these and how you stabilize them. So almost always this is gonna be a male patient who comes in and the story is going to be I punched blah, whatever. So that's what this one is. It's usually gonna be the hand that they're dominant with because that's usually what they punch with first. In this situation, this guy came in, he was right hand dominant, maybe he was in his late 20s. His story goes that he was uh, getting frustrated with some stuff going on with his life right now and he punched a wall, came in with pain and swelling to the fifth uh, metacarpal, kind of in this area right here. So, um, Obviously, my first thought is this is a boxer's fracture. You have a, you hit something, you have swelling to the fifth, which is the most common that gets fractured. It's a pretty textbook uh, presentation. Um, obviously, we get x-rays of that to confirm. Some of the initial thoughts I'm thinking when he comes in is I want to make sure he punched a wall. I want to make sure that this was not a person. So I just confirm you punched a wall. Is that correct? You didn't punch anybody. You want to make sure this isn't like spouse abuse or elder abuse or child abuse, something like that going on. Then you want to make sure that it wasn't a, a punch to the face because uh, if there's a bite or if there's a puncture from, uh, from a punch to the mouth and you have broken skin, you need to think about antibiotic prophylaxis for the patient. This guy confirmed to me that no, this was just punching a wall. He uh, he had a pretty sad story. He um, he had a former job and he was actually abused by some of his coworkers and he's going through a legal battle and lost his health insurance. And uh, I, re I really felt for the guy. It was a pretty rough case and it sounded like he was having a lot of hard times because of that. But um, anyway, back to why he came into the clinic. So we take a look at it. I don't see any punctures. It's not an open fracture. It's significantly swollen. Obviously we get some x-rays of the area. I will pull those up right here for you guys. So looking at these x-rays, you can obviously see that the fifth metacarpal the fifth metacarpal, excuse me, at the neck is fractured, and you can see that it's uh, angulated a little bit. <clears throat> the angulation is not terrible, but it is um, a decent amount of angulation. Uh, we don't see a lot of shortening to this either. So this is a couple views of the hand, just confirming that this is a fifth metacarpal neck fracture or a boxer's fracture. What do we do with these? Um, majority of the time these are non-operative fractures so the determination of this is open versus closed as part of the factors um how much angulation how much shortening that sort of stuff and the degree of angulation or shortening that you can expect is based on which digit you're talking so the first digit is way less accommodating of rotation angulation or shortening than is the fifth so the way I learned it in school was basically 10 degrees and then you add 10 degrees uh, as you go through. So the first digit is 10, then it's 20, 30, up to 40 degrees of angulation as you get into the fifth. Shortening is basically two to five millimeters per, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, or five. Um, so it's basically just all of them have the same acceptable amount of shortening. When I looked at this, to me, it looks more angled than I would like to see, especially because this is a pretty young guy. Uh, he's got a lot of years left and we want to try to get this as good as we can for him. We know this is not surgical, so I want to try to get this into the best alignment that I can. So I ended up doing a manipulation of the fracture site. The way that you do a manipulation, or at least the technique that I usually use, is I do a uh, block, a local block. Uh, basically, you just inject lidocaine, marcaine, whatever you got, right into the area of the fracture site, and I just inject, you know, three to five cc's of lidocaine. That gets it as numb as possible, and then basically I take them back to my x-ray room, I get x-rays of it, and then I manipulate the fracture to try to bring out alignment. Now, um, it's not the most comfortable thing for the patient. If it's a pretty big fracture or if it's like a wrist or something like that, you can also consider giving them some narcotic if you have that capability, uh, or if it's you know something really, really severe, you might wanna consider like conscious sedation or some sort of a, you know um, more intensive anesthetic type procedure with anesthesia there. 
this guy, we just numbed it up. We brought him back to the x-ray room. I ended up uh, basically what you do when you reduce these things or when you try to manipulate them to get better alignment is you want to accentuate the angle of the fracture initially to kind of free up some of that space. And then you want to reverse the angle of the fracture while pulling traction. So basically if the fracture is kind of here, you want to pull and extend back this way. And so that's kind of what we did to this fracture site. So you basically just do your initial manipulation. Sometimes you're gonna hear some popping, cracking, the pieces of bone moving against each other, that can happen. But that's basically what we did was we manipulated it and then we shot another x-ray and we just repeat the process until you're happy with the alignment. Luckily, this guy, he wasn't horribly swollen because it happened recently prior to his presentation. <clears throat> sometimes I find that if the person has a really muscular hand or if it's really, really swollen, sometimes it's difficult for you to get enough leverage on that to get the pieces to move. So you have to do a couple of, of manipulations to get it into alignment. This guy just took one alignment, uh, one manipulation. I'll pull up the picture right here. You can see this is what it looked like before manipulation. This is what it looks like after manipulation. Again, you can see we have much better alignment. It's uh, near anatomic. And again, this was not required because he did not have greater than 40 degrees of angulation to this, but I wanted to try to give this guy the best uh, angulation possible so that he would have great function of this hand because he did have kind of a deformity to that knuckle and his finger was a little bit rotated. So I wanted to adjust that and get it more anatomic. This guy did not have insurance, so this was a cash pay type visit, um, which unfortunately for patients like this can be pretty expensive. My thought process was, I will refer him to an orthopedic hand surgeon to have follow-up for this and to make sure that we get serial x-rays. We basically cast for about four weeks. That's how long the hard callus of the bone healing process takes to form. Soft callus is the initial healing process that takes two weeks out of from a fracture. You don't see findings on x-ray of that. And then hard callus, you start to see findings on the x-ray. It kind of has like a hazy outline around the fracture site. And that starts in the four to six week range and then it continues to be remodeled for six months to a year after the fact. So we're looking for hard callus. That means the bone's not moving anymore. That's when we can get this person out of the cast. How did we splint this guy? We ended up splinting him in an ulnar gutter splint and we wanna have the um, <clears throat> fifth digit flexed in about 50 to 70 degrees at the metacarpal phalangeal joint. So his hand is gonna look kind of like that. So we did a splint that comes up and across there. These three fingers here are free so that he can still write, he can still type, text, do other stuff. But we just immobilized the fracture site. Obviously pain pills, anti-inflammatories, ice, vitamin D, all that sort of stuff is helpful for the healing and recovery process. What I told this guy was that the gold standard is to go see orthopedics, have them continue to do x-rays, making sure the bones are not shifting, making sure that they're healing well, all that sort of stuff. But I wanted to try to get this as good as I can for this guy before he left so that if he did, um, you know, go see ortho, he at least wouldn't need any further treatment for it. It would just be pretty quick and straightforward stuff. I also discussed that I'm happy to repeat the x-rays in four weeks. Since this is a non-operative type fracture, uh, I felt comfortable just doing the follow-up for this guy just to try to save him a little money if he is unable to or cannot afford to get in with an orthopedic surgeon. I again stress that that is the preference um, that hand surgeons know what they're doing a lot better than I do. <clears throat> this is what's called a boxer's fracture, super textbook. It's always gonna be a punching type injury. Like we said, the biggest things is you wanna make sure that this is not being punched into somebody's face. This isn't like an assault where you have to get the police involved or anything like that. And you wanna just make sure you don't have to do antibiotic coverage for this. Like we said, the splint was an ulnar gutter, ulnar gutter splint with those fingers flexing about 50 to 70 degrees of flexion at the uh, metacarpal phalangeal joint. We leave the splint or the cast on in place for about four weeks or so, and then we can come out of cast at that time and get back to normal function. Sometimes people need a little hand therapy, physical therapy type stuff to just get their range of motion, get some of their strength back. Um, a lot of people are able to do that on their own with time though. Hope you guys enjoyed this episode. This is just a quick, easy one that you see a lot, but it's very common. So I thought it'd be good to let you guys know how these should be treated and uh, kind of some of the important factors you need to consider when you see these in clinic. Hope you guys enjoyed. Bye-bye.